This talk is an overview of medical emergencies in psychiatry. This talk will outline medical emergencies that psychiatrists are often called on to treat. For each of these, I'll outline the initial steps in pharmacologic treatment, as well as additional principles in management. For agitation, you should first determine what is meant by agitation. This is a nonspecific term that different providers will use to describe a wide range of behaviors, from mild disruption to severe aggression. And depending on the severity of the agitation, verbal de-escalation and environmental modifications may be sufficient. But for behaviors that are immediately dangerous to the patient or others, emergency medication may be required. In these cases, first-line meds include antipsychotics and benzos. Depending on the context, either may be tried first, or they may be used concurrently. Antihistamines may be tried second line. Delirium refers to an altered mental state that involves disturbance in attention and awareness and tends to fluctuate over time. Severity can be measured using the CAM-S scale. Delirium is a syndrome and can occur due to many different underlying pathologies, ranging from neurologic diseases to medication side effects and many more. Therefore, there is no specific treatment for delirium. Instead, treatment should be directed at the underlying pathology. Behavioral interventions are important, such as ensuring that the patient has a regular sleep-wake cycle, but meds are sometimes used when the patient's behaviors are interfering with medical treatment or are dangerous to the patient or others. In these cases, antipsychotics are most commonly used. By contrast, benzos, opioids, and anticholinergics should be avoided, as they worsen delirium. To help remember the meds to be avoided, you can use the mnemonic BONK. Catatonia is a syndrome involving both altered mental status and abnormal motor movements that can occur in severe forms of mental illness. Symptom severity can be measured with the Bush-Francis scale, and first-line treatment is benzos, most commonly lorazepam. For cases refractory to benzos, ECT is also effective. Antipsychotics and other dopamine antagonists should be avoided, as they can worsen catatonia. Extrapyramidal symptoms, or EPS, occur as side effects of antipsychotics. Therefore, the first step in treatment is stopping or at least decreasing the dose of the offending antipsychotic. Depending on the specific EPS, different treatments are recommended, as listed here. However, note that benztropine is effective for each type of EPS, so in cases of multiple or ambiguous symptoms, this is a good option. Alcohol and benzo withdrawal symptoms can be monitored with the CWAS scale. First-line treatment involves using benzos to ease into a more gradual withdrawal. Second-line options include phenobarbital and propofol. All patients with alcohol withdrawal should also receive supportive and nutritional care, including IV fluids, glucose, electrolyte replacement, thiamine, folate, and a multivitamin. The core symptoms of serotonin syndrome can be remembered with the mnemonic sero. Signs, referring to vital sign abnormalities. Erratic, referring to agitation. Reflexes, referring to hyperreflexia and clonus and overheat referring to fever. Management involves first stopping any serotonin agonists. Next, manage symptomatically with supportive care and benzos for agitation. Finally, in severe cases not responsive to supportive care, the serotonin antagonist ciproheptadine can be used. Malignant catatonia is a severe form of catatonia involving the core symptoms of chaos. CK elevation, hard referring to muscle rigidity, altered mental status, overheat, again referring to fever, and signs, again referring to vital sign abnormalities. It is managed the same as catatonia, but given that it is severe and life-threatening, ECT should be administered as soon as possible. Lorazepam can be used while preparations are made for ECT. Neuroleptic malignant syndrome, or NMS, is a severe and life-threatening manifestation of EPS. It has the same core symptoms as malignant catatonia, Therefore, these two conditions must be distinguished based on clinical context. Treatment involves first, stopping the offending agent. Second, provide supportive care and benzos for agitation. Third, provide disease-specific treatments, including dantrolene, bromocryptine, or amantadine. Finally, if all else fails, consider ECT. Finally, since the symptoms of serotonin syndrome, malignant catatonia, and NMS are similar, I want to point out that they can be distinguished based on the neuromuscular exam. Serotonin syndrome features hyperreflexia and clonus, while malignant catatonia and NMS feature muscular rigidity. That's the end of this talk. Thank you.